Hi, everybody. We're still working on uh, linear equations or linear functions. And this is the S section from Algebra 1 IXL. And we're going to do S9, which is slope intercept form, write an equation. I'm sure you're tired of hearing about slope and intercept by this time, but it's good practice. And uh, they do make a little error. And I'm just going to point it out one more time. Uh, here it is. The equation for slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is, of course, the slope. And b is not the y-intercept. 0b is the y-intercept. This is a point. It's where the equation of the line in slope intercept form crosses the y-axis. The b is the value that goes into the y-intercept. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, it is actually wrong to write this. Uh, the y-intercept that they're referring to is actually the point 0, 010. So just so you know that there is a difference. Of course, they just want you to substitute in the m and the b and write the equation. Since they said that the slope was 2, we're going to put 2 instead of m. m is the coefficient on the x value or on the x variable and the y-intercept is plus 10. And that's all you had to do for most of the problems, I'm going to guess, although they may have a little surprise in store for us. So I'm hoping. Anyway, I'm going to substitute it in and uh, let's get started. Let's see here. Sorry about that. There we are. So we've got y equals 2x plus 10. Looks good. Mm, six and six. So I'm just going to not even bother to write anything there. It's y equals six x plus six. And in this one, oh, y intercept is zero. Well, this is a special case. This is called a direct variation. When you have a y-intercept of zero, it means it's going through the origin. So when you go through the origin and it has a slope of two, it's going to look fairly steep. It's going to go through the origin. It's going to look like this. This is called a direct variation. And this occurs any time when you go through the origin, when you have a y-intercept of zero, zero. Uh, and it looks like this, y equals mx. Now, a lot of times in your textbook, they're going to change this from M to an A, which is uh, actually kind of crazy uh, because this is just a special case of slope intercept form when there's uh, the intercept is zero. So, or zero, zero. So there you have it. Y equals 2X, of course. Uh, this time they wrote it backwards but it's y equals x plus 3. You don't have to write the 1 in front of the x, of course. Uh, this time, ah, slope is 0. There we go. So this time, we have what's called a constant function. So what this looks like, uh, it's going through 0, negative 3. And as a slope of 0, well, notice this is a flat graph. And anywhere I go on here, any for any x value I choose, I've got negative 3 for y. y is equal to negative 3. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not a function. Well, it is. In fact, it is the most uh, um, predictable function that we could possibly have. This is called a constant function. That's the name of it and it's y equals some constant, and in this case, it's negative three. No matter where I go on the graph, y is always equal to negative three. Now, what's missing from this is we like to write it in slope-intercept form, so y equals zero x minus three, and it doesn't matter what value we put in for x, it gets eliminated by that zero slope. So y is always negative three. Uh, a good example of this in real life is a true dollar store, like Dollar Tree, where everything in the store literally costs a dollar. Well, if you look at the function of the price based on how many items you buy, the cost is F of the number of items you buy 
is always equal to one X at a dollar store because one is the price of everything. Um, now this, uh, there's another way of looking at that and then, and you could say, well, the price is always a dollar. So uh, then it's gonna be a straightforward uh, constant function. But this is uh, a slope of one, sorry guys, that, that wasn't a very good example, but um, anyway, it's y equals negative three. There we go. And let's see, we've got a y-intercept of negative six and a slope of one sixth. I don't think there's going to be much confusion about this and you probably aren't even gonna need me to do many of them for you, but I'm gonna finish them up anyway. Uh, we have a minus six. One thing to watch out for is that occasionally you're gonna have a situation where you need a fraction and it's a good idea to put it inside parentheses if you don't have a fraction, like a fraction bar to use. Uh, if you have to use the division, like that sideways division thing. Uh, line has a slope of one and passes through the point. Oh, so this one's a little bit different, uh, 310. So um, the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna say, okay, y equals, 1x plus b. The problem is we know what the m is, we know the slope is 1, but we don't know what the y-intercept is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the point that I know. I know an x and a y, don't I? I know that the x is 3 and the y is 10, so I can substitute this point into this equation. So I have 10 equals 1 times 3 plus b. And when I simplify and solve, I'm going to subtract three from both sides and I'm gonna get B equals seven. And now I know what my equation is. It's Y equals one X plus seven. You can see that it works and that it has a slope of one. So it's just X plus seven, if you like. I could write it like this. Hopefully you can see that if I put a three in for X that I get a 10 out for Y and that it does have indeed have a slope of one so <clears throat> y equals, you could put the one X or not, it's up to you, uh, plus seven. One X and X is the same thing. Uh, we have a Y intercept of zero and a slope of negative one ninth. This is that direct variation problem. We sometimes say that X and Y are proportional. That's another way of saying the same thing. What I was saying before is that uh, this is the correct way to write this. The problem with writing it like this is that you really can't tell this equation from this one. And later on in the course, we're, we're going to see problems like this. So a good way to eliminate that confusion is by putting that fraction inside parentheses. They didn't give us this option in the, in the program, but uh, Later on, if you're using a graphing calculator or something, you may want to always include the parentheses around fractions just to keep away from that issue. Anyway, let's put it in y equals negative one nine. Uh, ah, now a lot of people are gonna say, oh, the y-intercept is 10. The y-intercept is not 10. That is an x-intercept. The x-intercept is 10, isn't it? Be careful. So we have to use the y equals one-fifth x plus b, and we have an x and a y, but we're missing the b. So we're going to substitute the 10 and the zero. Uh, 10 is the x value, be careful. And the B, we don't know. The Y is the zero and we're almost done. We get two plus B is equal to zero. So we know that B is negative two. We subtract two from both sides. B equals negative two and we're basically done. Here's our equation, Y equals one fifth X minus two. I'm glad I did this one. I wasn't sure what, how it was going to be different from the last one. Y equals uh, one fifth X minus two. There we go. Okay, now we've got two points. Now, 
um, I want to mention something that, first of all, uh, I hope you noticed that we already know what our B value is before we ever got started. Uh, the first thing to do is that we have a couple of points and we know how to find the slope given two points. I hope that you've practiced this before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, long version for this and eventually I'll just go back to my regular shortcut. Uh, the long version is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is the change in y over the change in x is equal to the slope. Uh, we sometimes say rise over run. Well, the change in y, we have two different y values and we have two different x values. Uh, what I usually do is I try to choose so that I get a positive y just on, just to start out. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way. Um, I'm gonna list them in order. In other words, this is going to be x1, y1, and this point is gonna be x2, y2 but it doesn't matter which one you call the X1 and the Y1 and so on. Um, I'm going to su substitute them. So Y2 happens to be 10. Y1 is this nine right here. And X2 is the negative 15. It is important that you go in the same order and the X1 is zero. If you call this one point two, you need to make sure that you be, you're consistent. Otherwise, you'll have a sign error. Uh, this is 10 minus 9 is 1, and negative 15 minus 10 is negative 25. So one way to write it is that way. We can also write negative 1 over 25. And we already know what our B value is. Now, later on, we may have to go back and substitute this one into the Y equals MX plus B and find our B value. This is a very common uh, type of problem in real life examples, and hopefully we'll get to some of those pretty soon. Anyway, the equation is y equals negative 1 over 25 x, and then there's my y-intercept plus 9. I recognized it right away. So let's go ahead and put it in. Get rid of my writing here. Uh, that's negative 1 over 25 x plus 9 and make sure it looks good and hmm. did I make a mistake? Sure looks like I did. Let me just double check this real quick here. Um, go back here. Come on. There we go. Um, Oh, negative 15 minus zero. I, I couldn't see for whatever reason. I thought that was a 10 down there. Uh, that is a negative 15. I'm sorry, guys. I freaked out here. That is a negative 15, isn't it? It's as. And um, this one. sorry about that. I knew there was a problem because I did it in my head first, which is probably, there we go. Nothing like making a silly error like that. I got to talking too much. That's my problem. All right. We've got a slope of 13 over 11 and a y-intercept of 0. We have y equals 13 over 11x plus 0. Uh, the 0 we usually do not write. We usually just write it as y equals 13 over 11x, and that's it. This is called a direct variation problem. Is sometimes we say that x is proportional to y. There's both ways can be written out. Anyway, y equals 13 over 11x. Uh, now we have, they gave us the y-intercept, 0, 4, didn't they? And they gave us a slope, so we're basically done. All we have to do is write the answer in which is y equals the slope 15 over 8 x, and then we have a plus 4. And this one, I like this one. Okay, so we have two points. I'll try not to make a dumb error this time. 
Now, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and write my slope the way I like to write it, which is m is equal to the change in y. And the way I write my change in y is I just put the little arrow to indicate which direction I'm subtracting in. 11 minus negative 5. I'm going to go ahead and write it out this first time. Over 6 minus negative 10. Now, some people are going to insist on putting the parentheses and yada, yada, yada. Hopefully, you're not going to have to write this out. This happens to be 16 over 16, which is 1. Uh, and we already, uh, we don't have a y-intercept. Now, we still need to go back and write y equals mx plus b. Now, I found the slope. In order to find the y-intercept, I'm going to have to use one of those points. Now, it does not matter which one you pick, but you have to choose a point. I'm going to guess that most people are going to have a lot easier time working with 6, 11, instead of negative 10, negative 5. They both will work, I promise. It doesn't matter, but you got to choose one. It's kind of like the squirrel in the middle of the road. It doesn't matter which side of the road you run to, but you got to pick one, because if you don't, you get run over. So y equals. Uh, I'm going to pick the 611. I've got an x and a y, and I know a slope is 1. I've got an x, I've got a y, I've got an m, and all I'm missing is the b. So I'm just going to substitute. Now be careful. A lot of people are going to mess up and put the 6 in for y. Remember, that 6 is an x value, that 11 is the y value. So we have 11 equals m, which is 1 x, which is 6, plus b. It wasn't that bad. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Now, what I'm really hoping is that you all will watch when I do the, uh, when I do the word problems for this, because all of what I just did in arithmetic and basic algebra actually applies to real-life situations. And it's surprising how closely it actually applies to things that you can recognize as being real situations. Anyway, we're basically done. We just have to write our equation. Now, y equals 1x plus 5. Now, a lot of people are going to get all the way to the end, and then they're going to forget to write the, the correct answer. Now, how could I check this? Think about that for a second. What would be a way to check it? Now, I know that 611 is going to work, but couldn't I just put this other point into this equation and see if it actually gives me the right answer? And putting negative 10 in there actually does give me negative 5. I can do it in my head and make sure that I'm right. Uh, you don't have to write this coefficient of 1. You could just write y equals x plus 5. It seems like a lot of trouble to go through just for that, but it is what it is. There we go. Now I'll do another one. Uh, slope is 0. Oh, a slope is 0. Let's see. What, that, what does that look like? It looks like this. It's called a constant function. It looks something like this. Now, this particular problem isn't that one because I know that it goes through the point negative 2, negative 15. It's down here somewhere. So that is the constant function I'm looking at where this is negative 5, negative 10, and there's my negative 15. And this goes through all the points where y is always equal to negative 15. And that is its equation. This is a constant function. Nothing changes because it has a slope of zero. Be careful. When you have a undefined slope, that is a different situation. An undefined slope is where x is equal to a value and you have a vertical line. This is a horizontal line and it is a constant function. y equals negative 15. Slope of 1 and y-intercept of 3, that is x plus 3. We want to have a slope of 1, which is the coefficient on the x, and the y-intercept is actually 0, 3. Uh, another one that they gave us the answer on, y equals negative 1 fifth x minus 11. Now this one, we have to do the work. All right. 
Um, I'm going to subtract this uh, it, it, out of order, and I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. Can everybody see that 19 minus 13 is really easy? I'm going to subtract the y's and find the difference in the y's. Well, hopefully you can do 19 minus 13 in your head and get 6. And then I'm going to take 17 minus 11. I want you to notice the arrows are going in the same direction. That is 6. That's a slope of 1, isn't it? And I know I'm going through those two points. And it doesn't matter which one I pick. I have to pick one. So I have to substitute y equals mx plus b. And I'm sure some of you may have already figured out that uh, what the b is. It happens to be 2. But let's take a look and see why. We know that y is 19, the first point. And the m is 1. And I'm using the first point. So the x is 17 plus b. And I'm going to subtract 17 from both sides. And I get b is equal to 2. Uh, that's, I could have used the other point. And hopefully you can see that if 13 is equal to 1 times 11 plus b, that when I subtract the, the 11 from both sides, I also get b equals to 2. Either one doesn't matter. Uh, we just have y equals x plus 2. Uh, this one has a slope and a point. I really like these because if they tell you the rate of change and they tell you a point, we have an m, which is 1 over 14. We have an x and we have a y. Uh, I'm just going to write x, y, but I don't need to. I can just write them out. 14, negative 16. The most common error here is that when uh, students write this, mx plus b, they may not write this, but they'll start out by putting 14 in for y. 14 is not the y. Negative 16 is the y, and that's where it goes. Be careful. Negative 16 equals m, which is 1 over 14, times x, which is 14, plus b, and I hope you are not going to grab a calculator for this. 14 divided by 14 is 1. 1 plus b is equal to negative 16. And we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, and we have our b. b equals negative 17, and we're done. We have a slope, and we have a b value. y equals 1 over 14x minus 17. And we're sort of getting there. All right, looks like we have a y-intercept. They gave us right off the bat, 0, 12 is a y-intercept. B is 12. And notice that the y's didn't change, did they? Did you see that that y didn't change? Uh, there's a reason. Uh, slope is 0, but let's go ahead and write the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I subtract my y's, and look what I get, 0 over negative 1. Well, a lot of people say, uh-oh, I can't divide by 0. And that's true. But you can divide into 0. How many times does negative 1 go into 0? And that is 0 times. Be careful. You can't divide by 0, but you can divide into 0. And there is a difference. A 0 in the numerator is not a problem. So the slope is 0. Hopefully you recognize this as y equals 12. And it's going to become a lot clearer when you see that the 12 didn't change. Even though my x changed, my 12 didn't change. If you were to look at a graph of this, you're through 0, 12. I'm going to say this is 12 right here. And I'm also at negative 1, 12. And the graph looks like this, that nice straight constant function. Probably too much information, but there you have it. And we're almost done. All right, we've got a couple of points. Let's go ahead and write our equation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with my slope. My slope is going to be 25 plus 25, which is 50. Notice I took 25 minus negative 25. And I'm going to take 34 minus negative 34, which is going to be 68. And you do have to reduce uh, this, this slope. You should always reduce your fractions whenever possible. Um, looks like 2 is my only common divisor. 
and that's going to be 25 over 34. And that does not reduce any further. There's my slope, and I've got two points to choose from. I'm going to use this one right there. It's just way too much, uh, way too easy. So I've got y equals mx plus b. I already know where I'm going, but I'm going to go ahead and substitute for you. B, uh, sorry, m. P. God, that's bad. Sorry, m. The slope is the change in y over the change in x. I'm looking for my b. Uh, that's 25 over 34 is my m. And I need to choose a point, don't I? Which point shall I pick? Well, I am going to pick this one. Be careful. 25 is my y, 34 is my x, and the 34 is cancel. And when I subtract the 25, I'm going to get b equals 0. This is a direct variation. Uh, y equals 25 over 34x. There is uh, the y-intercept is the x, or excuse me, is the origin, 0, 0. And uh, any equation that goes through the origin is called a direct variation. So it is y equals 25 over 34x. Hmm. Oh, slope of 1. OK. So y equals mx plus b. That should be pretty familiar by now. My slope is 1. My y is 18. My x, sorry, that didn't quite look right. My x is 34, so I've got 18 is y, m is 1, x is 34, plus b. And I'm going to subtract 34 from both sides. And I'm almost done. b is equal to, it looks like 6, uh, looks like negative 16. And 16 and 18 makes 34. It looks good. And we're basically done. We have to write the equation. Uh, the slope is 1. And my b is six, negative 16. So it's just x minus 16. Oh, two points. How nice. OK, so m equals, I said that wrong last time, uh, 49 minus 44, which is 5. And 24 minus 19 is 5. And we have a slope 1. And we have a point, And the point is 44. Sorry, 4 equals mx. My x is 19 plus b. I just substituted y equals mx plus b. Uh, I usually don't always write that. I'm going to subtract 19 from both sides. I'm going to get b is by itself. When I subtract the 19, I get 25. And b is 25. And we're almost done. y equals 1x plus 25. How can I check it? Well, it's real easy to check it. Look how fast this goes. 24 plus 25 is 49. 19 plus 25 is 44, so I know for sure it works. Y equals X plus 25. Uh, we have a slope of 10 and a point. So I've got a point. I need Y, and I'm going to write it as I say it, equals M X plus B. And I'm going to add 90 to both sides, and I get 42. They told me the slope already, so I'm done. Y equals 10 X plus 42. Uh, we have a slope and we've got a point. So we have to substitute it. Y equals 23 over nine. The X goes in here plus B and I'm going to go ahead and just substitute my y right from the beginning. The y is 8, and the x is negative 9, and these do cancel out. That is the negative 1. So negative 23 plus b is equal to 8. I'm going to add 23 to both sides, and b is equal to 31. 
So I'm basically done. I'm going to do my answer y equals 23 over 9x plus 31. Hopefully I didn't make an error. I don't think so. And a couple more. Um, I'm going to subtract in this direction. This is my slope. I've got 42 plus 4, which is 46. I've got 25 plus 21, which is 46. And I have slope 1. And y is equal to x because it's just 1x plus b. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. I'm going to get, it looks like 17. And I'm done. y equals 1x plus 17. And you could check your answer by substituting the negative 21 in, seeing if it works. It does. And we're done. And it looks like we have maybe two more. Uh, oh, they gave us a y-intercept and a slope. Done. Uh, y equals 12 over 29 plus 22. And it looks like maybe just one more, I hope. Uh, getting a little tired here. So we've got a slope. We went right. So I've got to write the slope between the two points. 23, uh, 43 minus 36, which is 7. 11 minus 4, which is 7. <laughs> Looks like a slope of 1 again. And uh, y equals mx plus b. I guess I can put x plus b. I have to choose a point. I'm going to pick this one. 36 is equal to 4 plus b. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And so b is 32 y equals x plus 32, and we want to test it, see if that actually works. Substitute it. Put 11 in for x and see if you actually do get 43. And sure enough, you do. So we're done. y equals x plus 32. And we have one last one. Again, we have a point, we have a slope, and hopefully you know that y equals mx plus b. One last one, 25 is x, uh, is y, x is 2, m is 2, x is 34. Man, you can tell I'm getting tired here. Uh, we are going to subtract the 68 from both sides. And it looks like we get b is equal to negative 43. So y is equal to 2x minus 43. And made a bunch of errors. All right. Uh, we do have a slope of 2, and if we were to substitute this in, it would be 68 minus 43, which is 25. Yep. So uh, hopefully you guys got it all done, and to go to your mastery, go all the way to 100. And I'll see you back again. Bye.